foundations of our faith, Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. Now, Christianity is not a set of rules. Christianity is a life. It is a life in Jesus, and it's a life of Jesus in us. Paul talked about the mystery which was hidden from the foundation of the earth, but is now revealed in us. And that is what he called Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, outside rules bind us. You say, what are the 20 principles of Christianity? You do this, you do this, you do this. You have this kind of diet, you have that kind of program, you keep this many days and so forth, and you're bound externally. No way. That's not the way it works. The way it works is you give your heart to Jesus. The Holy Spirit draws you to Jesus. You are then receive Him as Savior and Lord, and He sends the Holy Spirit back into you. And the genius, the wonderful thing about the, the, the life in, in, in Jesus Christ is that we have within us God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it's the Spirit of God that makes Jesus known to us. Now, Christ in you is actually His Spirit. And He comes in two ways. The indwelling Spirit... and the outpoured spirit. Now, if I were to take a glass of water, as a matter of fact, I have a cup with some water and some ice in it, and I would drink this like that, after I swallow, I would say, I have water in me. Down the road from here, about 10 miles or so, is the Atlantic Ocean. If I would go down and get into the Atlantic Ocean, I would say, I am in water. In the one place, water is in me. In the other, I am in water. It's both a relationship to me in water, but it's one of degree or one of kind. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us at salvation and Jesus enters into our heart, He begins the work of producing what we call the fruit or fruits of the Spirit. Now, these are the characteristics of Jesus, and they reflect love, joy, faith, or faith, hope, and love, actually, rather than joy. I'd better put love, hope, and faith because they are the three major elements, but from this we have patience and long-suffering and goodness and gentleness and kindness and meekness and self-control. These inner characteristics that we would say, aren't you Christ-like? You seem to be like Jesus. There's something about you that's different. What is it? The indwelling Holy Spirit. That's part of the Spirit-filled life. But there's an experience that normally happens subsequent to salvation that is known as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4, we read about this wonderful experience when the Holy Spirit came upon those believers. Now, they had the indwelling Spirit, but they hadn't had the outpoured Spirit, is the best I can gather. Now, the outpoured Spirit brings what we would call the gifts or the manifestations of the Spirit. Now, there are nine fruit of the Spirit, nine, and there are nine gifts of the Spirit. And those are divided as we have uh, faith, hope, and love. We also have in these, uh, we have um, revelation gifts. Uh, we have power gifts. And we have utterance gifts. 
Now, the utterance has to do with speaking in tongues or interpretation of tongues or prophecy. The power gifts have to do with faith and miracles and healing. Now, the revelatory gifts have to do with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge and discerning spirits. One group of, of characteristics reproduces the life of Jesus. The other reproduces essentially the ministry of Jesus. The two together make for an extra something that only a Christian believer can have. This explodes into a new world of power and possibility. This enters us into the book of Acts. We suddenly take on a miracle dimension that no one else has. So you see, that's why it isn't keeping rules. It isn't listening to sermons. It isn't merely going to church or partaking of the sacraments or doing any of a, of, of, of a group of rituals. It is a life in union with Jesus Christ, fully empowered by His Holy Spirit. So what you need, number one, is to come to Jesus and be filled by His Spirit. Then you need to come to Jesus as baptizer and say, Lord, I want the power of God. And together, ladies and gentlemen, these are the people who turn the world upside down, and these are the characteristics that will win the world for the Lord Jesus Christ and bring about the church triumphant and glorious and ready for the coming of the Lord. And so we come to the point as the church moves throughout the world fulfilling its commission, empowered by the Spirit, that we join together with those people in the book of Revelation who say, even so, come. Lord Jesus. This is Pat Robertson with the last in the series, The Foundations of Our Faith.